Today, more by the numbers. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, one that is post covering finance and property news. Now, the RBA said they're going to be data driven in terms of future rate decisions. So therefore, the incoming data is particularly relevant. And over the last few days, we got a couple of data points from the ABS, which tells, well, quite an interesting story. So today we're going to look at firstly, the lending statistics and also the building approvals. Now, the ABS said that in March 2023, new loan commitments on a seasonally adjusted basis rose 4.9% for housing and fell 3.1% for personal fixed term loans and fell 23.2% for business construction, although rose slightly in trend terms. And the seasonally adjusted version of new loan commitments for total housing rose 4.9% to $24 billion after a fall of 1% in February. That was the first monthly rise since January 2022, but it still remains 26.3% lower compared to a year ago. For owner-occupier housing, it rose 5.5% to $16.0 billion, but is still 24.8% lower compared to a year ago. And for investors, housing rose 3.7% to $8 billion, but was still 29.2% lower compared to a year ago. So whilst there was a slight uptick, presumably related to the RBA pause in terms of rate rises, the overall lending momentum is still pretty weak. Very importantly to understand though, borrowers continue to switch lenders for lower interest rates as the RBA cash rates rose. In March, in season adjusted terms, the value of external refinancing for total housing rose 6.5% to $21.2 billion. And that is a 28.5% rise compared to a year ago. For owner-occupier housing, it rose 3.9% to $14.2 billion. And that's 29.1% higher compared to a year ago. For investors, it rose 12.3% to $7 billion and was 27.3% higher compared to a year ago. And this, of course, underscores the fact that people are still able to squeeze better rates by refinancing, assuming that they have a reasonable credit history and a reasonable loan-to-value ratio. And there are still quite a few households who have yet to take that opportunity. So if you've not checked your rate recently, it's worth checking it now because you can probably do better. In March 2023, in season adjusted terms for owner-occupied housing, the value of new loan commitments for the purchase of existing dwellings rose 6%, but was 25% lower compared to a year ago. For the construction of new dwellings, it rose 1.7%, but was 27.1% lower compared to a year ago. And for the purchase of new dwellings, it rose 3.8%, but was 23.2% lower compared to a year ago. So momentum is definitely way, way down. Now, looking across the states in Queensland, owner-occupied housing rose 10.1%. In Victoria, it rose 3.1%. In New South Wales, it rose just 2%. In Western Australia, it rose 5.2%. In South Australia, 8.2%. In the Northern Territory, a smaller and more volatile series, it rose 25.3%. And in the ACT, again, with volatility, rose 3%. In Tasmania, it rose 4.6%. Looking at investor housing, the value of new loan commitments in Queensland rose 7.7%, in Victoria 3.7%, in the ACT, again a volatile series, it rose 19%, in Western Australia it rose 3.5%, in New South Wales 0.4%, Northern Territory 1.4%, and in South Australia it fell 3.8%, and in Tasmania it fell 10.9%. Significantly, the average loan size for owner-occupied dwellings, that includes construction, the purchase of new dwellings and existing dwellings, fell at a national level from $586,000 to $577,000, but was 20.2% higher compared to the pre-pandemic average seen in February 2020. The value fell in New South Wales from $727,000 to $711,000 and in Victoria 
from 618,000 to 591,000. This, of course, is a reflection of tighter lending standards amongst the banks and also the different mix of business. The number of new owner-occupier first home buyer loan commitments rose 15.8% in March 23, after reaching a five-year low in February, again according to that ABS data. The ABS said that despite the monthly rise in owner-occupier first home buyer lending, the number of those commitments was still 22% lower compared to a year ago. During the second half of 2020, first home buyer lending reflected the strength in demand for housing during the pandemic with new commitments peaking in January 21 and declining by half since then. At the national level, they rose 15.8% to 8,128, after a fall of 4.2% in February, and it remains 21.8% lower compared to a year ago, and 50.5% lower than January 2021, which was the high. In New South Wales, they rose 18%. In Victoria, 10.7%. In Queensland, they rose 13.7%. In Western Australia, they rose 12.4%. In South Australia, they rose 17.1%. In Tasmania, they were up 9%. And in the Northern Territory, just 2.9% higher. And in the ACT, again, the volatile series fell 14.2%. So standing back in summary, you can see that the value of new owner-occupier loan commitments in March remained 25% lower compared to the same time last year while new investor loan commitments were 29% lower compared to last year. So there is still very significant weakness within these numbers, though I did note that a number of spruikers were out there calling the turn. Well, maybe, maybe not. To my mind, this was just a temporary little blip, simply because the RBA paused, of course, then the RBA lifted again. Now let's look at the total number of dwelling approvals. They decreased 0.1% in March in season-adjusted terms, following a 3.9% rise in February, according to the data today from the ABS. The ABS said that the result was driven by a 2.8% fall in approvals for private sector houses, following an 11.3% February rise. And private sector house approvals remain 15% lower than in March 2022. Private sector dwellings excluding houses improved by 5.6% in March, following a 9.7% decrease in February. This is the sixth consecutive month where the trend result has fallen for total dwellings approved, the ABS said. Across Australia, in season adjusted terms, dwelling approvals decreased in Tasmania down 42.1%, South Australia down 19.1%, and Queensland down 6.7%. Western Australia was up 27.2%, New South Wales was 3.1% higher and Victoria was 1.7% higher in March. And approvals for private sector houses fell in most states with New South Wales down 4%, Queensland down 3.9%, Victoria down 3.8% and South Australia down 0.1%. But Western Australia was the only state in March with an increase up 8.7%. And the value of total building approvals fell 5.9% following a 19.5% rise in February the value of new residential building approvals fell 6.5%, comprised of a 6.4% decrease in new residential building and a 7.4% fall in alterations and additions. The value of non-residential building approvals decreased 5.1% following a 41% rise in February. Now, of course, the HIA came out reacting to this and said that the first quarter of 2023 saw the lowest number of building approvals since 2012, just as population growth reaches a new record high. The ABS released its monthly building approvals for March, they said, for detached houses and multi-units covering all states and territories. Detached house approvals declined 2.9% in the month of March to be 15% lower than the same time last year. This continues the long-lagged response of Australian home buyers to the RBA's interest rate hiking cycle, with further declines expected in the coming months. The adverse impact of last year's cash rate increases is still to fully flow through to the official data. Further cash rate increases this year will have only added further weight to those declines, they said. Multi-unit approvals in 2023 have recorded their lowest level since 2012. The combination of construction cost blowouts, labour uncertainties, increased compliance costs and taxes on investors have seen approvals for multi-units stall. These disappointing approval numbers are occurring as population growth surges with the return of overseas migrants 
students and tourists. This imbalance will see the affordability and rental crisis deteriorate further, the HIA said. So, if you stand back and look at both the lending approvals data for new loans and also the building approvals data, you can see here that things are definitely coming off the boil significantly. And I'm not making much of the slight uptick in first home buyers, bearing in mind, of course, it's largely seasonal and also was impacted by the RBA stall last month. So I think we can expect to see further weakness in both approvals and lending momentum. And of course, that may give the RBA some pause for thought. But of course, inflation is still way ahead of where it wants to be. And they are still expecting it to stay high until 2024, 2025. Therefore, I don't think we're at the end of the rate cycle, despite the fact that some economists are now calling 3.85% of the peak. We will see. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.